Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all here for our weekly response and recovery call with Downtown Slow. Uh, happy February to everybody. We made it through January, so that's an accomplishment. Uh, my name is Bettina Swigger, and I am the CEO of Downtown Slow, and this is our weekly call where we get together to talk about what reality looks like each week uh, during COVID-19 and um, our shared reality. So it's great to see you on screen. Thanks for being here. We've got some good news to report with you and some, some really great speakers today. So uh, again, thanks for being here and we'll move right along. Um, our board of directors is on the call. So thank you as always to each of you. We do have a new council liaison. Council member Jan Marks is our city council liaison and she will be joining us for our February board meeting, which will be next Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. So um, I'll be sending out the board packet later this week for all of you who are on the board. Um, and stay tuned because this week, the new slate of candidates for the board of directors will be coming to your inbox if you are a member of the Downtown Business Association. So um, thank you to those of you who are running for a second term and to those of you who are coming back on the board running again after a leave of absence um, and to those of you who put your hat in the ring for the first time. So we'll share that information with you soon. Uh, let's talk a little bit about where we are this week. Rachel, how are you today? Good. Thank you, Bettina. As of Friday, 17,605 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in Slow County, and the city of Slow accounts for 3,142 of those cases. The total number of deaths does continue to increase in our county, and we are now at 168. Our condolences go out to their families and friends, um, and we continue to remember that we're all doing our part because this is affecting people in our community. Testing is available and you can visit readyslow.org to learn more. On the next slide, we wanted to provide a highlight of the main points of the Purple Tier reopening. Um, of course, this is not complete, but just wanted to highlight that outdoor dining can reopen as well as personal care services, hair salons, nail salons, uh, outdoors with modifications, as well as some increases in capacity, such as retail at 25%. With that, Bettina, I will turn it back over to you. Great. Yes. And I um, want to say that was a little bit challenging with the rain last week for all of the indoor dining or the outdoor dining to come back just in time for the storm. Um, however, if you operate a restaurant, I hope that was able to buy you some time, staff up, get the inventory um, to allow it. And we did see a lot of outdoor dining over the weekend and people taking advantage of our plentiful patios. Additionally, on our website at downtownslow.com, there is a list of all of the outdoor dining establishments in the, out, in the downtown, including all of the parklets. So if you're looking for a place to go, you can look on our website and find that out. Um, also did want to just touch briefly on the vaccine numbers. Uh, as of last night, I was reading an article that there are 10,500 people who've been vaccinated uh, with at least the first dose in Slow County. So if you take into consideration that we have a population of roughly 275,000, that's about 3% of our population has received a vaccination, at least round one. Um, round two vaccinations are coming starting this week. Um, they're moving through that staged phase every day and so I think we're doing a good job. The storm again did cause a delay in some of the vaccination locations being open so hopefully those will all be ready to open more this week. So we're currently in phase 1b. Um, if you think that your business is uh, be part of an essential worker. Some of your workers have been working the whole time, don't have the um, capacity to work from home, and you want to advocate for your business sector to be moved up in the vaccine ladder. I invite you to go to recoverslow.org and put your comments um, into that feedback. And that's where we are with the vaccines. Um, a little bit about the state and federal relief that is going on right now to help support you in your businesses. The Paycheck Protection Program is open, um, so check with your financial institution uh, or apply online. There are a couple of different ways to do that. Um, it's also time for you to follow, file your application to have your Paycheck, your Paycheck Protection Program loan 
forgiven if you got one back in um, April or May. So PPP is definitely at the top of our minds right now. The California business grant results did come out last week. Um, never fear if you were put on the wait list, which many, many, many of us were, um, you do not need to reapply when the next round of funding comes out. Um, you will automatically be entered into that um, pool again. They had, of course, many more um, applicants than they did have funding. There's also a $1.9 trillion federal aid package, which was announced by President Biden's administration last week, and that includes $350 billion to help state and local governments bridge budget shortfalls. It also includes $1,400 direct payments to individuals, expanded unemployment benefits, and federally mandated paid leave for workers and subsidies for childcare costs, because we know that parents have been having a, 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 certainly a unique experience during this pandemic. So that is in discussion right now. And if you are interested in following, this would be a good week to tune into your C-SPAN um, debates and see what's going on with that federal aid package. With that, we'll invite our first speaker to come on um, as she joins us every week, Courtney Kino from Cal Poly. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Bettina and all. I hope um, that you had great weekends. Um, and I, for my update this morning, today is the first day of the fifth week of classes, so nearly halfway through the quarter. Um, you may notice my background's kind of fun uh, this morning. It's also the 10-year anniversary of Jeff Armstrong being president of Cal Poly. So, we were celebrating a bit this morning, and I um, see that many of you on this call, um, I know that he would consider friends. So if you wanted to text him or reach out with an email, I know he'd love that today. Um, so more from Cal Poly. Um, you may remember last week that I mentioned that we had a spike in cases. And if you follow the Tribune, you will know that that was actually an error um, in the lab that we contract with. They um, notified 41 students last week that they were positive and that was a significant jump for us in that day. Um, and so we actually asked the lab to recheck those, um, those results and they were inaccurate. So out of those 41, 13, um, they were all immediately put into the isolation um, residence halls and 13 of them had then been exposed. So 13 remain in um, those isolation uh, residence halls and we're monitoring them closely, but really an unfortunate error and all the more motivation to move to what I've been telling you about our saliva testing, which we're hoping to get up and running this week um, and wastewater testing as well. Um, with that, some of the numbers as of Friday, we had 1,351 totally, total positive cases since we began tracking 140 positive students this quarter. We've conducted 55,691 tests in our ongoing testing program and about 38,000 of those just this quarter. So we've been averaging about 10,000 per week. Um, we have 89 students total in on-campus isolation and 31 in quarantine, 519 in quarantine in place. Um, and another note that may be of particular interest to those of you who have students that uh, may be entering one of our CSUs this fall, um, the CSU Board of Trustees met last week and decided not to increase tuition fees for this fall. So some good news, <clears throat> excuse me, for, um, for any of you in that situation. And that's all I have for this morning. Thanks for having me. Great, it's hard to believe we're already in week five of the quarter. That seems, well, I guess we're all suffering from time dysmorphia. So thank you very much for that, Courtney. Absolutely. Um, and uh, we have uh, Aiden Beals from Supervisor Ortiz Legg's office um, on the call today. Aiden, we'd love to hear a little bit from you about what's going on at the county this morning. Oh, you're on mute. Still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Good Hello. morning. Hi. Good morning. My computer has decided that it hates me this morning. So that's what we're 
that's what we're going through. Classic Monday. Um, I would love to share some updates on behalf of the supervisor. Thanks so much for um, letting me talk. Um, as promised, I have a list for everyone um, of um, some available uh, positions on commissions um, and committees at the county um, that I mentioned last week. Um, sorry, I don't have them available to, to flash up. Um, we have positions on the Commission on the Status of Women open, Commission on Aging, um, the Fish and Game Fine Committee, the Health Commission, um, which you have to meet a few uh, certain criteria, and then the Flood Control District 9, which is actually part of Slow Creek, um, which I'm sure is very interesting to a lot of downtown business owners. Um, if you have any questions about being placed on those commissions, uh, if you're interested in perhaps serving or you know somebody who'd be interested in serving, um, I would love to, to follow up with you. Um, I can put my uh, contact information in the chat um, and I'd love to talk about any of the commissions and what they do um, and, and what you'd be doing on, on the commission um, and the process for applying. Um, the supervisor has been working a lot on Diablo Canyon decommissioning um, and wanted me to share with everyone. Um, there is a lot that we can do um, as a county to make sure that in the decommissioning process, uh, a lot of um, local hire, local business um, activity gets baked into the process of how PG&E can take apart the plant. Um, and the, the supervisor has made this a number one priority, making sure that local businesses, local employees get um, access to that decommissioning process. And we want to let you all know that we're working really hard on that issue. Um, and that is, that is obviously a, a top priority um, as the economic future of the county unfolds um, simultaneous to COVID. Um, and then also we've been monitoring the situation in Avila, um, which I'm sure is of interest to a lot of you. Um, the supervisor and, and the flooding on First Street that took place, I don't know if anyone saw the, the KSBY um, update. Um, it's not directly relevant to downtown businesses, but in a lot of ways, the supervisor wants to use this as, um, as a, a, a highlighting of how difficult it is sometimes to work interagency. Um, and how the county works with the Coastal Commission and the Water Control Board and private property owners. Um, and we wanna let you know we are focused on that. We're focused on issues of flooding and we're focused on issues of long-term um, investment um, and long-term uh, uh, infrastructure. And so if you have any ideas of things that might become a problem with climate change, with um, um, rising sea levels, with, with things, uh, what infrastructure needs that we need for the future, um, we're very happy to talk um, about those because that's a, that's a priority moving forward as well. So with that, I'll move it back to Bettina. Thanks so much for listening to my update, everyone. Great, thank you, Aiden. We really appreciate having you join us each week and we look forward to hearing more about the plans for the Diablo Canyon um, decommissioning. I know it's outside of our business area uh, boundaries, but it certainly affects us because there are so many head of household jobs that come from there and many of our downtown um, business owners, our employees are in some way related to somebody who works at Diablo and it's great to know that there's going to be a focus to support local business on that decommissioning funding that's going to come down. Um, and we appreciate your attention to flooding as well. I know at our office we put down our floodgates on the outside of our office last week um, and it's something that's always top of mind right so we we lucked out this time um, but our neighbors to the north got really a challenge with the highway one uh, road collapse so more preparedness is always a good thing um, thanks aiden all right next up we have mr lee johnson with the city of san luis obispo good morning lee how are you are you there can you hear me hi yes good morning good morning i think uh the IT gods are not smiling on all of us today. Uh, Microsoft is having a cloud problem. So all of the CD is uh, kind of going in and out of having access to email. So if you're waiting for a response from the CD, uh, it might be a little bit. And there is also the potential that you will get conflicted or people are crossing emails potentially because we're all working offline and when it turns back on, they will all go. So 
could be a little confusing this morning, but uh, please bear with us and hopefully Microsoft will get things fixed. Um, on the Highway 1 closure, just so everyone knows that that also impacts Slow City, uh, can impact Slow City from a visitor tourism perspective as we come out of uh, the COVID situation. Over the last, um, since like 2008 and the Great Recession, every year uh, our tourism numbers and everything have grown except the year when Highway 1 was closed. So that can have an impact on us. That's something we should all pay attention to in the longer term. Uh, also, uh, the budget process continues. So tomorrow night, there will be forecast on the five year, for the five year, coming five years, revenue wise, all those things. So that'll be interesting information. And then on the COVID front, the, the thing we can do now is just get the numbers down, uh, follow the guidance, wear your mask, social distance, sanitize, all those things. While our case count is high, some of our other metrics are not too far off from getting us two tiers ahead, which has the potential, if we can stay there for two weeks, to move us forward, even if the case count is not where it needs to be. So everything we do helps, and I would ask everyone to do that so we can get to the next tier and try and get more businesses open and more activities allowed and all those things. That is the end of the report for me today. Thank you, Lee. Um, I know the city is working on the budget process um, this Saturday. Is there an opportunity for public comment or is that just a internal planning? This Saturday. Uh, I, that, let me check on that, Bettina. I'm okay. not exactly sure, but let me check on it and I'll get back to you. Great, thank you. And um, I also want to chime in and say that I too am having technical problems this morning. If you have sent me an email, my email is down. So I apologize if I did not get back to you. But yes, it appears that February has gotten off to a little bit of a gremlin start for all of us. <laughs> Um, great. Well, thank you. We appreciate you. And um, yes, I think Leanne, you're right that Mercury might be in retrograde. So we'll all um, just need to maybe go for a walk and enjoy our downtown and see each other six feet apart. Maybe pick up the phone and call each other this week. That might be a good, a good idea. Um, up next, we have another representative of our um, city of SLO. Uh, one of our police officers, our downtown sergeant, um, Sergeant Dickel is joining us this morning and we um, had a great conversation with uh, Sergeant Dickel about a month ago and we'll have this be a feature of our calls going forward. I know there have been a couple of incidents in the downtown recently so we wanted to make sure we could have um, Sergeant come on and tell us a little bit about what's going on with PD. Good morning. Oh, are you there Jason? You know, this is Rachel. I'm not sure if he's on. Um, oh, so we will progress and okay. I'll check back in later on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, well, then let's go ahead to uh, Jim D'Antona with the slow chamber. Jim. Hi, good morning, Bettina. So unfortunately, Jim can't be here today. He's out Hi. Of the so I'm going to fill in for you guys. So we just wanted to update you on a couple of things going on over here at the chamber. And so the first one this morning, we launched our regional business survey. And so again, we've been doing this periodically throughout the pandemic um, in conjunction with the other chambers to get a sense of how the business community is feeling, get your feedback, especially as we go in and out of different tiers. And so I encourage you just to go over and take that survey. It takes two to three minutes max, and it is really is helpful um, for us over here at the chamber. And then second, this Friday, we've got our weekly working lunch. And so really, we're really excited to have a conversation with Senator John Laird and really get to know him, where he stands on different policies and issues. And then this really is your opportunity to tune in and ask him any kind of questions that you might have. If you can't tune in on Friday, that's totally okay. You can go back and look at and watch it on our Facebook page at a later date. And then lastly, we've been working quite closely with the city on the small business relief grants. And so um, if you did apply for the grant, you should have received a notification last Friday, just letting you know that we are extending this another week, just to give ourselves a little bit extra time in the review process. We received so many applications and this is not something that we take lightly. So we wanna make sure that we are giving this review process the time and care that it needs. And that is all that I have, uh, Bettina, so thank you so much. Great, thank you for being with us, Kayla. And I wanna just give a shout out to the Good Morning Slow program last week. It was really fun to see um, one of our downtown business owners uh, Jenny Compult from the Junk Girls gave a great 
um, presentation about how her business pivoted during the pandemic and how they're doing really well. So that was fun to see uh, featured. And um, up next, we're gonna invite Maria Kelly from the EVC. Maria, I understand that there is some news about what's going on at the EVC. Welcome. Yep. Thank you, thanks for having me. I'm gonna share my screen and do a little presentation. So what we have happening at the EVC is right now we're walking through some steps for a merger. Oh, I forgot to update this from last week to this week. And wanted to share a little bit about what brought us to this point, the, in, the input from the community that really helped guide this, our stakeholders and customers, so to speak, of the economic development world. Um, and so back in July, all the way through September, there were several meetings with um, some key stakeholders. You can see the list right here, one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings that were held by um, our facilitator. We hired a facilitator to bring a few key people together and start discussing how can we best serve Slow County? Where are we aligned? What are, are the differences that might be, how we might be operating as organizations? Something that we need to consider um, really coming together and truly working in the spirit of collaboration. And so this was our July to September, very busy. So we jumped into a couple third party facilitated half day workshops, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, there were eight of us, nine of us at the Hotel Slow, socially distanced outside on the patio. It was great to see people. And we talked about what would we, what do we really need to do for the region? Um, Slow County centric as well, but also the larger region because we are, we're not limited by our borders when we're talking about um, the impacts on our economic development. So we went to our boards in October, we did a joint presentation and there was a unanimous agreement by both boards that we should continue the conversation on what a consolidation would look like, what key parameters did we need to consider. So the team met for um, eight weeks, uh, at least once or twice a week with subcommittees within that group also going off and meeting. And in November, we did a check-in and said, hey, this is what we're at, this is what we're doing. Um, and the board, both boards again said, bring back your final recommendations for consideration in December. Keeping in mind that we needed to pull a trigger um, in December to, you know, figure out, are we moving forward or are we going to, you know, each continue to work together, but maintain our own organizational structures. At that December board meeting, it was unanimous by both EVC and REACH boards that we should consolidate underneath the REACH umbrella, just for logistically, it's a larger footprint. Um, and we really talked a lot about how do we focus in on San Luis Obispo? How can the EVC, its network and stakeholders really work together and focus in on the sort of the just that our, our region specifically, our Slow County. So we're gonna, the plan is to fold under the REACH brand. We have some sponsorship transitions at play already. We, we jumped into 2021, that's pretty, pretty quickly, uh, making some of those transitions happen. And then we really are looking at how is it gonna integrate, which board members from the EVC board are gonna go ahead and integrate with the REACH board. And what we're going to do with the bulk of the other rest, remaining board members and hopefully additional people is create a Slow County Advisory Group. And that's gonna have more of the, um, the, the help provide that focus input and critical um, information into Slow County specific. Since we did hear from many in the community, that there's a concern that if there's a regional approach, what about, you know, what about, what are we going to do? And so um, really being attentive and responsive to those concerns. The, the exciting where we did find a lot of overlap was our cluster work. So we are going to preserve our clusters and, and actually shift some up. So we had a uniquely slow cluster, which was our ag tourism hospitality cluster. And, you know, Visit Slow Cal really has taken off, really taking a lead on the hospitality tourism aspect of that. And so we, we're gonna move that cluster aside and we're gonna be really focusing a lot more on tech, building um, tech, you'll see ag tech, manufacturing tech, clean tech, aerospace, uh, building design and construction. And the one that we're gonna really be expanding on hopefully is the healthcare and life sciences cluster. Um, looking at medical, um, all, the, all the medical, anything that touches our medical or um, life sciences community. And there is quite a bit of overlap there that we'll see with um, Santa Barbara. So we hope it's like for work hopefully and are excited for work on that. So this is what it looks like from a governance standpoint and what you'll see in the slow advisory column in the industry cluster columns. Those are really the specific things that EVC, um, that's where we found the most opportunity to really sort of pull in again, pull in the EVC networks, 
pull in um, our stakeholders, really capitalize on what the EBC has been able to develop over the past 26 years and preserving those pieces um, and then fitting into the larger parameters of what the REACH governance structure already had in place, which is the board founders, REACH council, practitioner network, and action teams. And you'll hear over the next, um, if you haven't heard already, probably over the next week or so, hear a lot more about what that practitioner network is really going to be launching. I think it'll be really interesting to this group. It's an incredible network of um, economic development, chambers of commerce um, in the throughout the entire county and region um, and really utilizing that the that um, attraction business attraction there's a lot of opportunity there's to work on business attraction and expansion so this is what the plan is to look like the timeline is um again we started really full sort of full force ahead at the beginning of 2021 it's gonna we are hoping or the plan is to have EBC wrapped up and wound up um, dissolving the organization by the end of Q2. So there's going to be a lot of things happening internally while we're moving through all this process. Um, it's very exciting. A lot of work to do because while we're doing all of that in the meantime, we're also still running our organization. So we're still in the middle of planning our broadband summit, which I hope um, everybody will feel to attend it is a free event um, and I can pass that information along it's going to be a really great so we're still doing our work and we're just slowly bringing the organizations together keep making sure that we're um, working complementary um, really supporting the reach 2030 plan very exciting um, things to come especially when I hear people I always am reminded when we're talking about Diablo and the closure of Diablo it really is exciting to see sort of how we're going to be able to hopefully diversify um, the economy, as well as reduce that, hopefully, that long-term dependence on that nuclear power plant. Happy to answer any questions, either via chat, or you can reach out to me directly at mkelly at slowevc.org. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to take any questions, Bettina, if we have any time. Great, well, thank you, Maria. Um, I appreciate your insight into this. And it's it occurs to me, as you were going through your slides, that our organization and the EVC have kind of operated on uh, parallel tracks for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. But our organization, especially prior to COVID, was not terribly focused on business attraction. Um, to my knowledge, maybe that maybe at one point in our history that had been part of our work plan, but in recent years, there hasn't really been a need for that to be um, such a focus because downtown is a wonderful place, which it still is. But right now we do have some vacancies that are going to involve some type of recruitment in order to fill those. And yes, some of that is up to the individual property owners in the downtown, but it would be interesting to hear if there's an opportunity to work with REACH specifically on the downtown. I believe that there will be. Again, I think you'll hear in the next few days over the practitioner network that's being developed um, with the, in the city of SLO, I know, is involved in that as well as um, other chambers. And, and it will focus on some, it will help show those empty spaces <laughs> and the spaces where we have um, room for people to come and grow. And again, keeping that pipeline really at the, at the state level too and working a lot more closely with GoBiz and so that we are front of mind, um, we're organized, we're front of mind, we're ready, we're available. You know, again, one of the drivers that really took us in this direction is the COVID, the issues around COVID, COVID response and COVID recovery. You know, the whole landscape has absolutely rapidly changed in the last year and we all need to be responsive in, in, to that. So um, there's some, there again, I'm, I'm super excited and I, there's not a lot of time to go into all the details. I know we'll hear more over the coming months, but I really am very optimistic that the collaborative approach for all of us is the best approach. Great, okay. Well, thank you and good luck with that. That's a, a big task to take on and I know you stepped up um, in an interim role. So um, Godspeed. <laughs> All right, um, thanks very much. Um, we're gonna go into a little bit of a report. I wanted to share with you some of the impact that we've had in our, um, our homeless outreach that we've started doing. Um, you may remember from prior calls that we received a grant from the city of San Luis Obispo 
to provide some more clean and safe services downtown. And some of that grant pays for additional ambassador hours in the downtown. And some of it also pays for a new partnership that we have worked out with Capslow. And pictured here on the screen before you, uh, you can see Maria and Cecil. And Maria and Cecil both work for Capslow. Um, and they are unfortunately going on to different positions, um, still working on serving the homeless, but Maria accepted a different position within Capslow. She will out now be working um, at 40 Prado full-time, uh, working in their clinic. They have an on-site clinic for unhoused individuals who go and need medical services. Um, and Cecil actually is gonna be leaving the area. He's going back to Fresno to work on opening up a Project Home Key Hotel. Um, and this is part of the program that uh, Governor Newsom put into effect that takes motels and repurposes them into short-term transitional housing for um, unhoused individuals. So in the time that we launched this program, it started on November 30th. Um, we had just over two months, but it was kind of a strange time during which to launch a program. Um, for one thing, it's COVID, so everything is complicated. Um, for another, it was the holiday season, so um, everything is complicated. But particularly, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of information about what was happening at 40 Prado at our city's homeless shelter um, during the month of December. There was an outbreak that happened at the, at the center, and so they did not accept new clients um, for about three weeks. And that definitely impacted the kind of outreach that could be done because it's hard to give outreach and say, hey, let's connect you to services when there is no way to get people in the services. So I'm happy to say that as of now, they are accepting new clients. Um, and this program continues to evolve. I had a call last week with Grace McIntosh from Capslow and also with Mark Lamore from Transitions Mental Health Association. And we're talking about ways to get the Transition Mental Health Association outreach workers connected with our outreach workers and our ambassador. However, um, I did want to, gosh, sorry, I just skipped ahead. I did want to share with you the impact that we've had even in this sort of strange two month of a quick outreach program being launched. Maria and Cecil have had 67 hours of direct contact with our unhoused population. That includes 216 individual contacts. Um, and they've also engaged in business education and some, some of them have gone in and talked to some of you and your businesses, um, 28 of those. So we see the impact already of this program and we're really excited about how it's going to grow. We are in the process of bringing in um, <clears throat> a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a new um, outreach worker and that person will hopefully be starting this week and will be joining us on a future call to give some more updates. A little bit more about what's going on downtown. The Light of Downtown program still has been extended. This is a fun shot of the local love, tunnel of local love downtown. Um, you can see it in Mission Plaza. And you can also visit and participate in our community art project and drop off your postcard with your wish uh, for the new year. The new year pod pictured over here has the disco balls in it and that's been a 2021 theme. It's going to be switched out this week with a theme for the Lunar New Year, which is gonna be the year of the ox. Um, and that celebration is on February 12th um, and Valentine's Day is of course February 14th. So two more weeks to enjoy this particular iteration of the installation and we'll be sharing more about what's coming next later on. We do have the postcards that we've collected so far in the window and it's really fun to see those come in and brighten up our spot. So that brings us to the end of our content for today. Um, it's a little bit earlier than we expected. It's 1034 and since it sounds like a lot of us have some email technical difficulties to solve, um, we may want to just end early. But I did see that Lee has circled back and answered a question about the goal setting workshop. Lee, did you want to say anything else about what that is? Uh, sure. It's basically the council takes all the input they've gotten to date and just groups that up into the big picture goals that then we as city staff go back and work on the details and the work programs and the money and all of that kind of stuff underlying um, what the, the council's initial direction is. So it's kind of their chance to work through all the input they've had, discuss it and come up with the big picture items that then we go back and work on and then come back to the council after we've had time to work on it. 
Great, okay. Um, and while I've got you, I've got another question for you. Um, because it's been a minute since we were in the purple tier, <clears throat> excuse me, can you remind me of what the protocol is for the parklets and being in operation? Is that- so like, It's just like outdoor dining. So full service, they can have plates and serve alcohol and all of that, as long as they still have an active um, ABC permit for the parklet, they're good. There's a couple, I think a couple of businesses who gave up their parklet permit so that they um, didn't get in trouble with the ABC when they were out doing enforcement. Uh, if they did that, they just need to renew it. I think it's a hundred dollars, but as long as you have the permit. Is that through 10 p.m. or is that through midnight? Or? 10 p.m. All the parklets are 10 p.m. Great, okay, thanks. I just wanted to remind folks of that. Yep. And if they have a private patio, they can operate till midnight or is It depends any? on what their permit, what their use permit is uh, for on the alcohol front. So different, different establishments have different times based on when they got their permit. Okay. And I do see a question in the chat. Um, what about gyms? They're outdoor only right now. Is that correct? Is correct. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you very much. And if there are no other questions, happy to take any questions, comments, criticisms, criticisms, jokes, compliments, um, ideas, or um, anecdotes. Nope. Okay. Well, with that, we'll let you go a little bit early this week. And our next meeting will be February 8th. If you are a member of the board of directors, we will also have our next board meeting on February 9th. And um, if you liked and found this helpful, please tell a, a friend and your, one of your neighbors downtown um, about these calls. We love to see and share with you um, as the information unfolds in real time. Um, enjoy the sunshine, everybody, and have a nice week. <laughs>